What impresses me most about the original 2290 is how fantastic it sounds and how they managed to combine analog with digital in such an optimal form. I think it's pretty funny that when you look at the original 2290, it says dynamic digital delay. And uh, the fun part of it is that when we opened the device and started working with, we found that a large part of it was analog, not digital. And as it turns out, you know, digital was a buzzword of the mid 80s. And if you did a, a piece of equipment that had a, just one bit, you would name that digital. Uh, and so they did at that time. And um, perhaps that is the reason to, uh, to why it sounds so great. Jeg synes, det er super fedt, at det rammer tilbage i, i 80'erne, hvor, hvor alting var analogt, og, og hvor produktet oprindeligt også kommer fra. Så det giver den også noget... Naturligt. People would think that since the original 2290 was digital, that it was a simple porting of the code from the 2290 to the to a native plugin and the device that we are talking about today. But in fact, it was not. It's it's a complete rework of uh, and and emulation of how the analog uh, circuits are, are are built up. I think the um Especially the, the delay modulation, it's really, uh, yeah, it's genius the way it's made. But we soon realized that it was actually in the, um, in the microcontroller that all the signals were generated for the modulation part. And we don't have any of the original code for the microcontroller, so we had to just measure it, measure the hell out of it. It can be really difficult to, to transfer the knowledge from electrical components into the digital world because of how the components influences each other and, and the complexity is just, it's just uh, crazy. So it's really about listening. All the four units sound different. <laughs> so we had to figure out which one do we want. Um, and in some parts we wanted one of them and in other parts we wanted the combination of some of them. The new 2290 is unique because we have maintained the sound of the original device and at the same time we've made it possible to integrate the hardware in your door workflow in a very optimal way. You simply connect the USB cable, open the plug-in and you can start playing around with it. What I really like about it is how you can have multiple instances using just one device. With the new 2290, you get all the benefits from plugins, which is project recall, preset recall, automation and stuff like that, combined with the benefits of having a real piece of cool hardware at your desk right beside you. We have put so many hours into making it sound as great as the original. Why don't we listen to it? So uh, I've loaded up a couple of tracks. What we've done here is that we've added a really, really complex um, set of, uh, setup of the 2290. And um, there is rhythmic delay going on, there's uh, feedback, there's panning, there's dynamics, and there's modulation of the, of the delay. First, uh, without. that you actually hear the delay and otherwise you just hear it as, as a stereo spread and, uh, and space really. Digging into the features just reveals how much more than a, a delay this, uh, this processor is. It's 
the finest delays with panning and stuff like that, but it's also uh, lush choruses, uh, f- the most creative flanging sounds, all kinds of stuff that you can just keep on digging into. No matter how you tweak it, no matter which preset you recall, and no matter how you set any parameter, it just sounds great out of the box. And that's due to the fact that all the components, all the parameters within the engine of the 2290 interact with each other. So if you put one parameter very far out, the device compensates, so it still sounds great. The original 2290 was five, six thousand dollars in 86. With the new one, you get a version of it that has the same sound, but is integratable into your door workflow at 349. 